All right, everyone, a big hello to everyone that's listening to Tom's Talk Time. Joining me now is Aussie rocker, Reese Maston. Reese, thanks for having a chat to me today. Oh, thank you for having me, pal. No worries. So, have, first of all, Merry Christmas. What, Merry what are you Christmas. saying for Christmas? <laughs> I'm, I'm just at home. I, actually, I've, I spent a little bit of time in Melbourne the last couple of weeks, and then I've just come up. I've been here now in Adelaide for a uh, couple of days, maybe. So I'm just chilling with the family. My grandparents are up from the UK. And so, yeah, just, just having a, a bit of a family time. And then I I pretty much hit the road straight away on Boxing Day to start the tour. So I'm just getting as much family time in as, as possible. But, yeah, we're just all having fun and, and sweating away in the uh, 40 degrees in Adelaide. Oh, fantastic. And I've had a few people ask me to ask you, are you like everyone else that leaves the Christmas shopping right up until Christmas Eve? Yeah, are you, yeah. Are you organised? I haven't done it yeah. yet. I haven't done it yet. I have plans to maybe go tomorrow, but because um, I've got I've got three sisters, I've got my nana and granddad here, I got my mum and my dad, I got my other nana and granddad that live down the road. So it's like, oh, is there anything I can buy where I can just do them all in one? So I tried to get like a PlayStation. So last year I got a air hockey table. Oh, that's uh, yeah, a good this idea. Year I'm, I'm just running out of ideas slowly, and the house is running out of room as well. <laughs> oh, well, still got a bit of time left, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I might just go, you know, for the the good old jewelry, you know. Oh, jewelry that's always good. a winner. People okay. are always happy with jewelry. That is always a winner. So you've announced three shows here in WA. You must be pretty excited about that. Yeah, I, I came and did a uh, install for the album, and I hadn't been back for ages, so it was it was awesome. I saw heaps of people that, you know, it was like three or four years ago that I'd seen them, and everyone's all grown up and working and all this, and it was good to see everyone, so I'll be pumped to come back and do this, because I haven't actually done an acoustic show at all in Perth, and it's something different for me, and I've been sitting here over Christmas with my, my baby sister Georgina and we've been um, working through the songs and it sounds cool, it's something that I don't think my fans anywhere have really seen and to be able to come back down to Perth where I haven't been for a while, it, it's pretty awesome it's especially when I've got a new show that I can kind of give them kind of a, a little bit more of an exclusive look at the new show and but yeah, it's, it's going to be good I saw you on your last tour when you came up with the Kin and I know those those guys pretty well um, yeah, that was I came awesome. along I mean, you put on a fantastic show, and obviously that was more of a, a rock show. This one's a little bit more acoustic. Is there any rituals that you do before you go on stage to get to get all that energy up? Yeah, well, I mean, mine's probably more so nerves. I mean, I keep saying, you know, ah, you know it's all nervous adrenaline and stuff, which it is, and I know when I get up there, I'll be fine. But normally, it's it's the, the, anything you can do just to kind of be calm, I think, a little bit before the show. You don't want to really you know, have a full room of people screaming and going crazy. You can't, I kind of want <laughs> just a couple of minutes just to chill yeah, and then definitely. walk on because as soon as it, you know, as soon as you're on there, it's pretty energy the whole way. I, I find it hard not to up really when I'm doing music, especially this one is what I kind of worry about. I tend just to talk for very long times if somebody is going to let me tell a story. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of stories on this last album, especially for this show. I'm going to try and you know tell them, but not uh, chew people's ears off if that's possible. <laughs> and what about after the show? Is there anything that you do to wind down? I imagine you're probably full of adrenaline and maybe no voice. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I tend to normally... I'll have a little bit of a sing on the way at home, I think. Not not belting, I just have a little bit of a sing to the radio and make sure I'm not uh, huffing anything down or drinking anything too much straight after the show because it just that, that's definitely one of the, the bad ways. That's not the good way. But, uh, yeah, as long as I keep my warm down properly, then I'm all right. And I can, especially because it's acoustic as well, so I'll get a little bit of a, a bit of room to, to do some more, more different things that I haven't been able to do as well. So it's going to be... It's really cool. I think the more you sing as well, the more you kind of build up a bit of an immunity. Yeah, yeah, the stronger you get. So the new album, it's a sort of a different sort of look for you. What what was the writing process for this one like? Did you go in, um, you know, recording, wanting to, to get over a specific message or sound? I think the only thing uh, for me, like the, the, the last like four years, or, or since the show really, I mean, I've had some pretty amazing times and, and along with that the tough times I think you know there's, there's always that balance between bad and good and, and obviously I went through so much change which is really where the you know the title for the record came from change colors yeah with, with this record I just you know I felt like I had been unhonest in the way I'd kind of put myself out there and this record I wanted to be not just brutally honest to the people that I'm giving this to but to myself as well so when we were writing songs like Lockdown and the, all, the, all the personal ones, really, it was, yeah, it was yeah. tough, but it, it becomes a therapeutic thing, especially for the, for the artists, I think. And I think that comes across for other people's lives and they pick up that, that release of, you know, 
you know, this actually happened. And, and it does help. It's like a diary, I guess, to kind of come up with the, the, the stories that hit you the hardest and they're normally the easiest to write. So when we went in, my, my friend Ben Rogers, who produced the record and, and plays all over it, is um, well, he's an amazing musician, really. I'm pretty in awe when I'm next to him. He knows what he's doing. So we, we, we just sat down. We came up with a, a bunch of tracks and went to L.A. and met up with a bunch of great people. And when we ended up doing the whole record, we got all of my my friends and my manager's friends and family to to get on board and, and have a sing or I'll play play guitar and it was just really fun I had, I had the most fun I've ever had making an album doing it in this way and, and I've been more honest with myself than I, I think I've ever been as well so it's been a pretty life-changing experience and uh, a pretty I don't know I feel like I've, I've learned a lot and uh, come a long way just from this one record so I'm looking forward to the, the next few but I'm as long as we get this tour right, I think we might be able to do a few more. <laughs> well, we hope so. I mean, you you really are fantastic. What about going in, you know, when you're getting an album underway? Is it easier for you to start with a melody or start with the lyrics first? They always spring the other, you know. I think if you if you come up with a melody, just normally in my head I can kind of hear a message or a vibe, you know. When it, if it's a sad melody, a happy melody, or you know, you know that kind of thing. I think they kind of bounce off one another. So I normally I'll, I'll hum away. At something, or I'll I'll have this one lyric and this one message that I want to mold the melody around. So I think it's cool when people do really, really unorthodox ways of coming up with the structure of songs. It, it makes for people you know making something a little bit different and coming from a different angle. That's why I really like co-writing because you have another pe- person's mind in the room that might think something a little bit more twisted than you, and you can go on that tangent and you can you know bring that into your thing. So the best way to do it is just. Have a, have a good vibe or a good energy that is going to make a good post for the, the whole song. And what about in terms of duets? Do you have that one person that you know you would do any song in the world with? Mahalia, and my manager, we, we've sung together a few times. We don't sing together as much as we used to. I don't know, I, I love singing with her. I love trying to, you know, one-up her. And she, I'm never going to be really. She's, she's always going to have that, that extra yard on me and those extra <laughs> couple of years. But she she's incredible and I love, really love singing with her because I love it when she, you know, sings those couple notes higher or sings that lick a little bit better than me. It kind of makes me giggle. So, uh, yeah, she's she's definitely someone that I, I I love singing with. Oh, fantastic! Well, thank you very much for having a, a quick chat today, Reese, and Thanks, have buddy. a lovely Thanks for having me on. And yeah, no worries. And I'll see you at your show in WA. Looking forward to it. See you there. Merry Christmas. Uh-huh.